This presentation will cover the cellular mechanism of platelet aggregation and some of the drug targets for controlling blood clotting. This process of blood coagulation is regulated by a series of mechanisms in order to prevent blood loss when damage to the body occurs. This process involves the formation of a blood clot, also known as a thrombus, which prevents the loss of blood from the damaged tissue, blood vessel, or organ. This process involves platelets, clotting factors, which are proteins not depicted here, white blood cells and red blood cells, which help to form the platelet plug. This initial plug is not strong enough to completely seal the wound and is only a temporary intermediate step in the final clot formation. The coagulation cascade stabilizes this plug by its formation of fibrin, which brings together the platelets, white blood cells, and red blood cells to form the more stable clot. This here is a complex depiction of the coagulation cascade pathway with all of its many factors and feedback mechanisms. This presentation will only cover a general overview of this cascade and therefore we will try to simplify it for a better initial understanding. The main thing to understand from this diagram is that there is an intrinsic pathway initiated by direct contact with the site of injury and an intrinsic pathway. The two pathways share a mutual pathway known as the common pathway which converts prothrombin into thrombin and thrombin is used to convert fibrogen into fibrin. The take home message is that the final outcome of the coagulation cascade is the fibrin which forms a cross linking in the clot formation. Before we lead into this final clot formation, it is also important to understand the mechanism behind the formation of the initial platelet plug which takes place in the blood platelets themselves. Their aggregation is initiated by the activation of the GP2B3A protein on the surface of the platelet, which upon activation experiences a conformational change that allows it to make the necessary bonds with the other platelets in the formation of a platelet plug. By looking at the simplified diagram, we see three of the factors we will discuss in further detail in this presentation. ADP and TXA2 are involved in the activation of GP2B3A and PGI2 exhibits the opposite effect that ultimately leads to the inactivation of GP2B3A. The following is a list of some of the antithrombotics you may become familiar with. Although there are many different classes of antithrombotics, they are split into two main categories, antiplatelets and anticoagulants. In this presentation, we will cover the following four drugs, Plavix, Aspirin, Pentoxifilin, and Warfarin. Aspirin is a salicylic ester of acetic acid used for many indications due to its wide range of effects. As an antithrombotic, it is used to prevent and reduce the risk of heart disease. It achieves this by inhibiting the synthesis of the prostaglandins from arachidonic acid in the Cox pathway. Aspirin conveniently bonds irreversibly to COX-1 and therefore TXA2 and PGI2, which were introduced earlier, cannot be synthesized. Again, we know that TXA2 increases platelet aggregation and vasoconstriction, while PGI2 decreases platelet aggregation and causes vasodilation. However, as we see in this diagram, because TXA2 is mainly synthesized in the platelets and platelets do not have any nucleus, it cannot synthesize more protein and therefore the effect lasts the entire lifespan of the platelet which is about 7 to 10 days. Because PGI2 is mainly formed and released from the endothelial cells which do have a nucleus and can form more proteins to overcome the effect of the aspirin, there is more PGI2 left to exert its effects on the platelets after aspirin is administered and therefore the ultimate effect is a decrease in platelet aggregation. Some of the common side effects of aspirin include nausea and vomiting, GI irritation, heartburn, and abdominal pain with cramps. Because of its irreversible effects on platelets, aspirin should not be taken at least seven days before surgery or immediately after surgery. Plavix is the brand name for another common drug 
Clopidogrel typically dosed 175 mg tablet per day for the prevention of clotting such as in coronary and peripheral artery diseases as well as for patients who recently suffered from a heart attack or stroke. Plavix is an antagonist of the P2Y12 ADP receptor found on platelets preventing ADP itself from binding. As mentioned earlier, ADP mediates the activation of GP2B3A and therefore platelet aggregation is inhibited when ADP cannot bind to the P2Y12 surface receptor. Some common side effects of Plavix include itchiness and diarrhea. It is important to note that since Plavix is metabolized by the cytochrome P450 family of enzymes, it may be involved in potential interactions. Some drug-drug interactions with Plavix include PPIs, NSAIDs, and warfarin. Pentoxifilin is the active ingredient in many brand name medications including Pentopac, Pentoxil, and Trantol. It is a synthetic xanthine derivative known as a hemorrheologic agent also used for many indications including peripheral vascular disease or PVD. PVD increases platelet aggregation, but treatment with pentoxifilin increases blood flow and decreases platelet aggregation by stimulating the release of prostaglandin PGI2, which we mentioned earlier decreases platelet aggregation. In addition, a negative feedback via increased CAMP inhibits COX and therefore also increases vasodilation by decreasing TXA2. The outcome of treatment of PVD with pentoxifilin results in improved blood flow and relief of symptoms. Some common side effects include GI and CNS effects as well as angina and flu-like symptoms. Pentoxifilin is contraindicated in lactating women as well as in people with a history of intolerance to the medication or other xanthine derivatives such as caffeine. Pentoxifilin is contraindicated with ketorolac antacids such as aluminum and magnesium hydroxides, other anticoagulants, or a few others listed here. It is important to note that safety and eff efficacy of pentoxifilin has not been established in children less than 18 years of age and should therefore be avoided in the pediatric population. Care should be taken when dosing the elderly as they have an increased bioavailability due to slower clearance of pentoxifilin and therefore have an increased risk of acute toxicity which may result in hypotension, fever, seizures, and loss of consciousness. Here is a recap of the three antiplatelet drugs and how they inhibit platelet aggregation by inhibiting the activation of the GP2B3A complex. In order to present warfarin, it is important to reintroduce the coagulation cascade diagram from earlier in this presentation. Again, since this is such an information-dense diagram, the important thing to understand is that warfarin indirectly inhibits the maturation of coagulation factors 2, 7, 9, and 10, therefore inhibiting the cascade to proceed and produce fibrin. Warfarin, also known as coumadin, is a vitamin K antagonist used to prevent and treat clots. The following indications list some of the conditions where warfarin therapy may be implemented. To understand how warfarin works as a vitamin K antagonist, one must understand the role of vitamin K in coagulation. Vitamin K is a cofactor necessary for the carboxylation and maturation of certain proteins into functional coagulation factors necessary for the coagulation cascade to proceed. The reduced version of vitamin K necessary to activate these factors comes from vitamin K epoxide through a series of enzyme catalyzed reactions as seen here. Warfarin inhibits the vitamin K epoxide reductase C1 subunit or VKORC1 enzyme complex and possibly the vitamin K reductase as well. This results in a decrease in the reduced form of vitamin K needed to activate the coagulation factors 2, 7, 9, and 10 and therefore decreases the clotting by the inability of the coagulation cascade to proceed without these factors. These factors' half-lives are important in understanding the time required for warfarin to produce a desired effect. 
because warfarin has no effect on the activated coagulation factors but only on preventing their activation, the active factors must be depleted through normal catabolism in the body in order for a dose of warfarin to take effect. This explains why 3-4 to four days of warfarin therapy may be needed for a complete desired response, but this is only an average and may vary depending on the patient's rate of metabolism and VKORC1 genotype. The common side effects of warfarin include fatal and non-fatal hemorrhage with additional symptoms listed here. The severity of these symptoms will vary depending on the extent and site of bleeding. Because warfarin has a small therapeutic index, it has a potential to interact with all sorts of other drugs. This is barely scratching the surface of all the possible interactions with warfarin, but it is important to understand that there are interactions that will increase the effects as well as decrease its effects. Because of all these potential interactions, there is a black box warning on warfarin to closely monitor regularly on all treated patients because of the high risk of bleeding. Here is a quick look at some of the major diseases associated with the formation of undesirable clots which can decrease or even stop blood flow in certain blood vessels and body tissues. Undesired clot formation in arteries of the heart is known as coronary artery disease and is associated with decreased nutrition and oxygen supply to the heart. It is commonly associated with chest pain and if left untreated it could lead to tissue death in the heart and therefore heart attack. Deep vein thrombosis is the formation of clots in the venous system usually affecting the legs. It is categorized by redness, warmth, leg pain, tenderness and swelling. Part of these clots can break off and affect other vessels. Such a clot can even travel to cerebral arteries leading to partial or complete blockage of blood flow to an area of the brain causing a stroke. A sh severe stroke can result in coma or death. In summary, there are many diseases associated with the undesired formation of blood clotting that can lead to serious outcomes if left untreated. Some of these medications discussed in this presentation used to prevent blood clotting include aspirin, Plavix, pentoxifilin, and warfarin.